All right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. How are we feeling today? All right. Big day for the city today. Big day for professional soccer. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming out today. I want to thank a few folks from our Metro Council first. It's going to take their teamwork to help get this thing done, along with the state and our office and the owners, obviously, and a great team. So I want to thank Metro Council President Yates, Metro Councilwoman Sherry Bryan Hamilton, and Metro Councilwoman Barbara Sexton Smith here for joining us on behalf of the council. Thank you all. Normally where we have these type of uh, gatherings, we have a little better physical surroundings than this. Uh, not in what is close to a blighted brownfield, but I promise today there's a good reason for being at this very site. Uh, as you all have heard me say many times before, our city has incredible economic momentum. When you look around at the jobs created, over 60,000 jobs, nearly 3,000 new businesses, 24 million tourist visits a year, 25 hotel projects underway, and we've attracted over $11 billion in capital investment here in our city, which is a real record in a real time of renaissance. So folks, that's how you define momentum. And it's the products of a lot of people working really hard and working great, as great partners and with great teamwork over the years as well. And that momentum and that progress is something though that you gotta keep working at, right? Momentum's gotta keep rolling. And that's what we plan to do every day and we do that in partnership with our citizens and our council as well. That's why this has already been a great week for our city. On Tuesday, we announced that the Louisville Urban League's proposal has been selected for the Heritage West property at 30th and Broadway. And Councilwoman Hamilton's uh, district here. Good job. We'll work with them and other partners to build a $30 million indoor track and field facility that will turn those vacant 24 acres into a vibrant hub for economic activity in the historic Russell neighborhood. That's just the latest in a series of really exciting developments in West Louisville. We'll be seeing more than a half a billion dollars of investment in West Louisville, including the $200 million choice neighborhood project that's planned for the eastern end of Russell, which is already underway. Just yesterday, we broke ground at the site of the Northeast Regional Library. When it opens in 2019, it will be a one-of-a-kind destination with indoor and outdoor learning spaces, walking paths, and a beautiful restored historic home that we'll use as part of the entire campus devoted to lifelong learning. And today, you all are invited to be here because I'm excited to tell you that we have reached an agreement with the owners of Louisville City FC to create a vibrant new stadium district centered right here. Let's hear it for the Coopers and the Heretics over here. All of our great men couldn't do this without you guys. Right on. See that? He even gets the big picture here. Now think about this as a, a beautiful new district uh, for our city that will be anchored by a professional soccer stadium, but the district will include hotels, restaurants, offices, and other retail properties. It will be anchored by a brand new 10,000 seat soccer stadium for Louisville City FC. <laughs> People get a little nervous when you start talking about uh, sports stadiums and arenas and, and government, so I want to make a few things clear on this. Louisville City FC is paying for all the construction costs. They will be building the stadium with their own money. Metro government is not paying to build the stadium. We are contributing the land, and when I say we, I mean Metro government, which is the people of Louisville. Uh, I will be involved as the mayor and the Metro Council representing everybody, but this is our collective statement as a city. We're contributing the land, and I'm really excited about what we get in return. If you think about where we are in the city, this is a prime, prime piece of underused real estate that's adjacent to the really popular neighborhoods like Nulu and Butchertown that are growing through their renaissance era at times as well. It's also within sight of our thriving downtown, the Waterfront Botanical Garden, which will open in 2019, and of course, 
globally award-winning waterfront park as well. The stadium and the surrounding development will be visible from the interstates. People driving by on game nights will see the Coopers and the Heretics and all the other soccer fans packing the house and having a great time in Louisville. And that's a message we want to keep sending far and wide all around the world. Creating this stadium district will help us to continue the build on the kind of critical mass of culture, events, activity, great food, great bourbon that we have here in our city. And you get that by establishing and further connecting these areas between growing neighborhoods. That's why we work to open the Big Four Bridge. That's why our city helped form public and private partnerships like the one to create Waterfront Park and the parklands at Floyd's Fork. Look at what those developments and others like them have meant to our city, to our economy, and to our quality of life here in Louisville. And this is the right time for this investment. Soccer is tremendously popular among young adults who we want to encourage to move to our city. We have 30,000 open jobs. We need more people to move here. And it's really popular with our growing international community as well. Louisville City FC has been selling out games at Slugger Field. We are lucky to have the best coach in the game with Coach James O'Connor. The humble coach, James O'Connor. He's do, been doing a great job building an out, outstanding contending team every year. And the players, our players have really stepped up and are performing well. Let's see it for the players here. Wouldn't happen without the ownership group. The Louisville FC ownership group and board, including Mike Mountjoy, John Neese, Tim Malloy, John Hollenbach, Tom Mueller, Barrett Nichols, and many others. They've worked really hard to put together a viable soccer franchise that's established a fan base while playing in a baseball stadium during football season in a town known for horse racing and basketball. Not too bad. So these are great business people and great partners as well. And the truth is they won't really be making money on this deal in the short term. This is something they're doing because they believe in the future of soccer and the future of Louisville, and so do we. This stadium will help us compete for an MLS franchise for Louisville down the road. Here's how our agreement works. The city will buy the land that we're on right here. We've already secured options from the owners. The city's investment will be $30 million and will own that property outright. Louisville City FC will build the stadium with its own money. And if there are cost overruns in the construction process, Louisville City will cover those cost overruns, if there are any, 100%. Let me be absolutely clear. Not one penny of Metro government money will go toward building the stadium. That will be entirely financed by Louisville City FC. This is very, very different from the financing arrangement at the Yum Center, and that's by design. The city has no annual obligation in this project either. If the stadium is not completed for some reason, which it absolutely will, the city will be in a position where we either own the property outright and can develop it however we want, or Louisville City FC's ownership will repay every dollar that Metro government has spent on this project in full. This is how you build a partnership. This is a 40-acre parcel. The stadium itself will occupy about 12 to 15 of those acres. And Louisville City FC will retain the majority of the revenue from games and events there. The reward for the city will come from the other acreage to be developed around the stadium. Hotels, restaurants, more retail. And built into our contract is the construction of the stadium will comply with Metro Ordinance 37.75 which means at least 20% minority participation in contracting, 5% by women contractors, and 75% at a minimum of the work must go to workers who live right here in the Louisville area. This is our proposal. My team and I, along with our partners in Louisville City FC, will be presenting this to the Metro Council, and naturally there's been work done already to get that rolling. But we look forward to discussing this with them as we work together to plan the future of our great city. We'd also like to work with the Metro Council to apply for a mixed-use TIF from the Kentucky Economic Development Finance Authority. 
That's a process we all know well. The Metro Council just last week passed a TIF incentive to help fund the relocation of Passport Health Plan's headquarters to West Louisville to help fuel the resurgence we're seeing at 18th and Broadway. That's the same kind of resurgence we want to see right here. Looking long term, within 20 years, Louisville City FC will reimburse Metro governments $14.5 million of the $30 million. In other words, the net money out to the city will be $15.5 million out of a total project of approximately $200 million. That money that's coming back to the city is money that would have been spent or was spent on land to install access roads, sidewalks, and other infrastructure. So what we're looking at is a metro government investment of approximately $15.5 million. We'll use that to leverage an estimated $130 million in private investment to transform a space today that yields almost no tax revenue into a thriving development with jobs and businesses that will benefit, benefit our city for decades and decades to come. And if the city, if the stadium hits certain financial markers, the city has to share in the upside of that growth. So our citizens participate in the growth as the team and the stadium succeeds. When you combine the proposed Metro government funds with support from the state and investment from Louisville City FC, this is roughly a $200 million project that will transform this neighborhood and further Louisville's growth for years to come as we build on our great soccer success here in the city. All of these reasons are why this is a great and worthwhile investment. And it's a deal that we've done our due diligence on and have negotiate, negotiated with the best interest of the citizens of Louisville as our goal. The stadium district is a great opportunity for our city and it's a smart opportunity for Louisville. And when opportunities to move our city forward come up, we're going to jump on them, we're going to work with our partners, and we're going to get them done. That's how you create momentum, and that's how you keep it going for the future of our city. In closing, I want to thank a couple folks that have really worked from our Metro team uh, tirelessly to make this happen. Jeff Mosley has worked sk skillfully and tirelessly on this project over here to get things done. <laughs> Jeff, you've done a great job. I also want to recognize Laura Ferguson. Those two worked together to pull together a deal that was pretty complicated. You all have been great. Good, good job. Okay, I'll be glad to take any questions in a moment, but right now let's have a few words from the Louisville City FC Ownership Group, represented by Mike Mountjoy. Mike. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and let me uh, give our thanks to the mayor uh, and his team, uh, especially Jeff, who has worked tirelessly with us for over a year. I think we've met with him every Tuesday for the past year and a half to get through this thing. His team has worked hard. The Metro Council, we've had to thank the Metro Council for what they've done, the whole group. Our, our fans, we can't say enough about the Coopers and the Heretics and the rest of our fans. We're nothing without fans. Uh, our board has worked extremely hard on this. This is a complicated process, uh, but we're, we're there. So we want to thank all of those who have been involved. Our coach is critical to us, and I'll talk about that in just a second. And our players are that much, well, I don't say more critical, James, but at least as critical. So we want to thank the coach and the players for the effort that they've made to make us one of the best teams leading right now the Eastern Conference of the USL. We started this, uh, this journey three years ago uh, with a strategic plan. And that plan was that we were gonna buy a USL franchise and bring that to Louisville to build a team here. And the reason for that was, is we looked at the, the opportunity to do that, the, tra the trajectory of soccer was substantial. We don't have a professional basketball team. My opinion, never will have one. We don't have a professional football team, and the same thing goes there. But we do have the opportunity to have a professional soccer team, and we have the opportunity to have a major league professional soccer team. So when I went to the mayor three years ago and said, Mr. Mayor, this is the one opportunity we have in this community to have major league sports. And major league sports are critical to the growth of a thriving community like Louisville can be. And we put together a strategic plan. We knew it wouldn't be easy. We knew our situation in Slugger was going to be very difficult for us to deal with. It's not a good lease. 
you know, we can't make any money, so it's about, I don't want to go into what we lose to play in there, but it's okay. We're going to build the stadium here. But the strategic plan had the stadium in it, but it also had in it that we were going to get the best coach in the league. He was going to get the best players. We were going to be the best team in the USL, and we're on a path to be that best team. I've told James, he's tired of hearing me say it, I want, a I want that big trophy in our office, and he's promised me he's going to bring that to us. And more importantly than that, when we, we're not a top 40 TV market, there's some issues to get to the MLS because of things like that. But what we've said is if we are the best team in the USL, if we're the best team in the USL, we win the league, we have the best fan base, we fill the stadium, we're going to have our opportunity to get to the MLS. And when we get to the MLS, our coach and the players that we have and the players that will come after them are going to be the best team in the MLS. Our goal is for us to be the best professional soccer team in the United States. Now, if we can accomplish that, and that, that sounds like a real stretch goal, and it is. There's no question. I asked James earlier, are you okay with me saying this? He said, I am. It is a real stretch goal, but it's not an impossible goal. So if we put that in front of us, if that's where we're going to go, and we collectively as a community with our, our political leadership, our financial leadership, and all of the rest of the fan base that we have, we can make that happen, and we can be the best team in the MLS and the best team in the United States of America. So we appreciate all of you and everything you've done, and I think with that, Mayor, do you introduce James or do I? Let's do it together. Okay, well, come on up here. Come on up here. We're gonna it, was, it was the early days in Louisville for soccer. In the midst of a storm, there was a calm man who clearly knew what he was doing. He gave us confidence that we would be able to pursue this goal of being the best soccer program in the country. Yeah, exactly right. And, and the guy that's going to do it, the guy that's going to take us there is our coach, James O'Connor. James, if you'd come up and say a few words. Thank you. Um, I think for me, the, the first thing I have to do is, is thank everyone for coming. Um, I think, you know, obviously I'm born in Ireland, but we've, we came here three and a half years ago. I've got two young kids, and, and we try to participate as much as we can in the community. And I think when you look at this actual partnership, I think it's probably the best description of a partnership. I think the, the soccer team obviously gained by getting a, a stadium, but when you look at the redevelopment, that is gonna uh, that's gonna happen around the stadium. I think the gain for the community, I think, is is double ended, especially for our supporters. So I think the the mayor, Jeff, Laura, all our owners, our board deserve a, an enormous uh, amount of credit for all the hard work that's gone into it, and also the vision. Because you know, in a few years' time, we're gonna have a soccer stadium. We're gonna have tremendous redevelopment in an area at the moment. When you look at, th there isn't too much to look at. So. I think, as I say, everyone deserves a, a huge amount of praise and credit for, for what will happen. Um, certainly from my standpoint, I want to thank the owners um, for, for their commitment. I think over the years it's been a, a big financial commitment to, uh, to continue to make. I think they deserve an awful lot of credit for, for showing the grittiness and determination to see it through. Um, and last but certainly not least, I want to thank the players because I think the players have been, have been excellent um, and, and long may that continue. So thank you very much. Thank you, Coach. Great job over the years here. You're doing, building a wonderful program. Okay, to make this thing happen, obviously we, the Metro Council has got to approve all of this. Then we've got to work with our partners at the state as well. So speaking on behalf of the Metro Council, we're pleased to have their president with us here today, David Yates. David. Anybody notice when Coach took the mic, the clouds came in, everything got a little bit cooler? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's a coincidence. Well, first of all, on behalf of the Louisville Metro Council, my colleagues, if you want to step up and just stand beside me on this one, because this, nothing gets done on this council without a working partnership. We work together on these things, so I'm glad to stay up with you, because we're really proud and we're really excited. When this first came to us, while there was excitement, there wasn't a whole lot of support, and that was because of the fiscally conservative attitude this council takes. But behind us, the owners, the board, they worked, they came to us, they talked to us, and they brought together a very true public-private partnership, one that is a win.
for not just this area, not just this brownfield that has been left undeveloped and is not, is not a good representation of what this city is when you come in. But it's a, it's a great benefit for this entire city. From the far east corners, the far west, the far south, everybody will have the positive economic impact that will come from this. In essence, we're, building, we're going to build another bridge. We're bridging the areas of Nulu, we're bridging to our, to our thriving downtown, to uh, the entire city. We can't have the continued gaps. This comes right after the announcement the other day, West Louisville. We've had winds throughout, and we'll continue to have those winds. But in order for the city to invest in our citizens, to issues like public safety and infrastructure, we've got to continue to, to be the economic engine of the state. And this, my friends, has turned out to be a great investment that will come back and pay dividends. And so with that, I am extremely pleased to be here on behalf of the Metro Council and, and thankful to not only Jeff Mosley and, and Laura, um, the, main, the administration, but also to the entire board and the owners for really coming and, and bending and twisting to make sure this happens. You know, that don't always happen in government. Right. And this thing, I, I think we were responsible and there's gonna be a win-win. So for all the fans, you're gonna have a great stadium, not only just 10,000 seats, but the ability to expand whenever we fill that thing up. We have the first opportunity to have a professional team here, which puts Louisville on the map, which we need. We work on town attraction. When we visit other cities through GLI, Glide trips and things, we talk about what do we need? We need to bring the best talent. We need to attract millennials. Professional teams do that. They make sure that people know what Louisville is. What do we have? And I'll tell you, we have a great team. These players behind us, they are great on the field and off the field. We can be proud of them. So yeah. guys, So, Coach, I can tell you, if that wasn't true, we wouldn't be doing this today. The fact that they win, they fill the stadium, and they represent our community well. So we're excited to get behind them. We're excited to make this happen. We're excited for the up to $200 million investment that's going to come from this. So on behalf of the Little Metro Council, we thank you. We thank the players, and we're all excited. Thank you. Okay, it's hot, but we'll take a few questions if there are any. Timeline. Timeline. Jeff, you want to come up here and work through the steps? In our agreement, they, uh, Louisville City has to get started by uh, January 1 of 19. Uh, I think uh, the development team of that would tell you that, that they want to be under construction in the fall of 18 to open by March of 2020. Time, in time for the, the 2020 uh, soccer season. Uh, uh, you mentioned that <laughs> who, who will get the revenue from the non-stadium portions of the site, the hotel, the, the other development, uh, and what are the prospects right now for those uses? Are you talking to any prospective tenants or not? Uh, the, the, the prospects will go to a separate LC that Louisville City is putting in place that, that will represent the development group on the rest of the property other than the stadium. In terms of prospects, I think it's a little early to talk about that, but as we talked about, I mean, generally what the goal is is more retail, hotel, office, that type of thing. You mentioned the $30 million development in West Louisville twice during this press conference setting. Will Louisville FC be having a practice? Well, there is, if you, if you were at the press conference the other day for the Heritage West program, there is a soccer field inside the outdoor track, and we certainly, we, we love the fact that's being built. We'll practice there some. It also gives us some relief. We have two practice fields down on River Road that if we have a si significant flood could go underwater, and if they go underwater, it kills the grass. So uh, we're, we're loving the fact that it's out there. Our players will be out there. We could put on some clinics and things like that and use that field. Okay, thanks everybody for coming. This has been a Metro TV production, a public service of Louisville Metro Government.